Hello and welcome to Masala Trails with me Smita Dev on Get Curried. Today I'm going to talk about Tausif Bhai. He's my neighbor's cook who makes the most amazing biryani and mutton chop and feeds us generously during Eid. Once while I was cooking for a party and he came up to borrow a lemon and he was so excited to see me just going at it, you know. So he got into this teaching mode and he decided to teach me his signature dish, the Hyderabadi mutton biryani. which was thoroughly appreciated by everybody and so today i thought let me teach you also how to make the hyderabadi mutton biryani so for this biryani first we'll marinate our mutton for that i've taken 1 kg mutton and i'm going to grind some ginger garlic and green chilies make a nice paste and apply it to the mutton So let's grind this to a fine paste now. You can add some water. Our ginger garlic and green chili paste is ready. Let me keep this aside and then we can grind the other ingredients. I've got some fried onions here. In the recipe I have explained how to fry onions nice and golden please go on that and check how to fry your onions golden so now these uh, onions which i have taken about 7 uh, of them i have fried them nice and golden crisp now i have to make a paste of them i'm going to leave a few of them just for garnish You can add some water and grind to a fine paste. Yeah, our onion paste is done. This is how fine it should be. Now let's marinate the meat. First with the ginger garlic and green chili paste. Now I'm going to add 2 cups of yogurt or curd. Half teaspoon of turmeric powder and two tablespoons of chili powder. I'm going to add some coriander, finely chopped coriander, fresh mint leaves. We still have a couple of ingredients to put in this. Uh, I'm going to make a nice fresh garam masala powder with some green cardamoms, black cardamoms, pepper, cloves, cinnamon, and some black cumin seeds. This is done. Now let's add this to the meat. Let's squeeze in some lemon juice. And some salt. Let's rub all these masalas well to the mutton and we'll use our hands for this. After mixing this a bit, you can add your onion paste. Mix this nicely. There are two ways of cooking this mutton gravy. Either you can put it in a heavy based large bottom pan or you can just put it in the pressure cooker which is a quick and easy method. And today I'm going to put it in a pressure cooker. Very little water. You need to pressure cook this mutton for about 3 whistles and then on a low flame for 20 minutes. For the rice, I've kept some water to boil. I'm going to add my whole spices to this: bay leaves, cinnamon, green cardamoms and cloves. Salt. I've taken about 3 liters of water, so I'm going to add 2 tablespoons of salt. For 1 kg of mutton, I have taken half a kg of long grain rice. You can use basmati rice also. And now our water is boiling. We can add the rice to this water. I have soaked this rice for 15 minutes.
You need to cook this rice till it is three fourth done, which takes about ten to twelve minutes. Making biryani is indeed a time-consuming process, but the end result is fabulous. It's almost ten minutes. Let's check the rice. It's almost done. So let's now drain off the water. After the water is drained, we need to cool the rice. We'll cool this rice in a large dish so that it cools quickly. This pressure cooker has cooled down. Just let's see if the meat is cooked. Yeah. Our mutton is cooked. It's nice and tender. Now I'm going to smear some ghee on a heavy bottom broad based pan. And now I'm going to layer it with half the quantity of this rice. And now the mutton gravy. I'm going to put some fried potatoes in this. I just took the potato, chopped it into two and fried it. I'm going to place them around everywhere and I'm going to put in a layer of the remaining rice. And now for the final touches, I've soaked some saffron strands in some warm milk, which I'm going to pour now on this rice. This gives our biryani a nice fresh yellow color. Now I'm going to add some ghee. I'm going to sprinkle some mint leaves, some coriander leaves, the remaining fried onions, and now I'm going to cook this on a dum. So for that, I'm taking some chapati dough and I'm going to put it on the edges of this pan of mine. This basically helps to keep the steam inside the container so that everything gets evenly cooked. And I'm going to seal this pan. Just cover it and now on a very low flame, cook it for 20 minutes. We had kept the biryani on a dump for 25 minutes and our biryani is ready to be eaten now. So I'm going to switch off the flame and just remove the lid very carefully. And now let's serve this biryani. You can see the beautiful colors that are coming out. I'm sure you're going to enjoy cooking this dish and feeding it to everybody. Do try this dish at home and give me your feedback. Keep watching Masala Trails with Smita Dev on Get Curry. Hi, this is Smita Dev and welcome to Get Curry. When we talk of an Indian chicken curry, normally the butter chicken is on top of the list and when it comes to rice, everybody relishes the biryani. So today I thought let's amalgamate both these recipes and make a butter chicken biryani. So for that, I've heated a pot over here, which I'm going to add three to four tablespoons of oil. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter. Once the butter melts, I'm going to add a cashew nut paste. I took a cup of cashew nut, which I soaked for about an hour, and then I ground it to a nice fine paste. I'm going to add this. I've kept the flame of the gas on a low, so that the butter doesn't burn. A heap teaspoon of garlic paste, and a heap teaspoon of ginger paste. I'm going to saute this till the raw smell of the ginger garlic goes off. To this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of degi mirch chili powder. If you don't have degi mirch powder, you can use a regular one. I'm going to saute this. A teaspoon of turmeric. I have blanched six tomatoes, medium-sized tomatoes, and then I have ground it to a nice fine puree, which I'm going to add to this. 
and I'm going to saute this for a minute on a high flame. Let's add some chili sauce, a teaspoon of chili sauce, a little more than a teaspoon if you like it spicy. And I'm going to add half a cup of tomato ketchup. And let's saute this till the oil separates. While you're sorting this gravy for the oil to separate, just be very careful because these bubbles just go on spluttering everywhere. You might just get burnt. So, as you can see, we have little oil that is separated. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of garam masala powder, some kasuri methi powder, a teaspoon of kasuri methi powder. Let's add some salt. I have Tandoori chicken already made over here, which we have deboned and kept. We've already done the recipe of a tandoori chicken on this channel. The link is in the description, so you can take the recipe from there. And now I'm going to add this deboned chicken. I've taken a whole bird over here, the whole chicken. Just going to mix this. While blanching the tomatoes, I used water. The water I have retained, which I'm going to add to the gravy. Say a cup of water is good enough because we don't want our biryani to be too dry. Let this butter chicken boil and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. We've given this butter chicken a good boil, which is going to reduce the flame and we're going to add some fresh cream, about half a cup of fresh cream. Mix this. Our butter chicken is ready. I have got the rice steamed over here. I took three cups of rice, basmati rice, and now I'm going to just top this with the rice. Let's add some ghee. Just let's pour it on top of this rice so the rice feels a little greasy. I have some kevra essence, you can use rose essence as well, rose water, a little bit of this. I have soaked some saffron strands in warm milk, which I am going to pour on this. And I am going to garnish this with some freshly chopped coriander leaves. Some fried onions. Now I'm going to cover this and cook it on a low flame for about 10 to 15 minutes and then our butter chicken biryani is going to be ready. Our butter chicken biryani is ready. Let's remove it in a serving bowl. So you saw how you can make a quick butter chicken biryani. If you want, you can just keep some of the gravy aside and have it with a paratha as well. Or you can have this biryani with a nice cool raita. So do try this dish and let me know. For such interesting recipes, keep watching Get Curry. Hi, this is Smita Dev and welcome to Get Curried. Today I'm going to teach you a recipe that I learned when I was 17 years of age. My mum had a party at home and I insisted on cooking something for her. And it's that time that she taught me how to make the Karnataka style chicken biryani. And it turned out fabulous. And I thought I might share this recipe with you guys. So let's make the Karnataka style chicken biryani. I've got a kilo of chicken, which I'm going to marinate it with a cup of yogurt, a teaspoon of turmeric, and some salt and I'm going to make a green paste which we're going to use for the marination as well as the gravy. For that, I'm going to take five spicy green chilies, a big cup of coriander, half a cup of mint leaves, pudina, 15 cloves of garlic, two inches of ginger and one onion, large onion, 
and I'm going to add very little water and make a fine paste out of this. It's a nice smooth paste. We'll add half of this to the chicken for marination. To this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of garam masala powder. You can use any garam masala powder. I'm going to mix this well and marinate it for an hour. And while this is getting marinated, we'll make a gravy. I'm going to heat a quarter cup of ghee. And once the ghee melts, I'm going to add five medium sized onions that I have sliced. And I'm going to saute this till it becomes nice and golden. Now while this is turning golden, we'll make the rice. For the rice, I've taken three cups of basmati rice, which I have soaked for 15 minutes in water. I'd kept about three to four liters of water boiling here. I'm going to add two and a half tablespoons of salt to this. And then I'm going to add the rice that I have soaked. I'm going to stir this gently and then I'm going to cook it without a lid till each grain is nice and separate and almost done. So let's see the onions now. I want my onions to brown a little fast so I'm going to add a little salt. Keep an eye on the rice as well. Keep the flame on a medium. The onions have turned brown. I'm going to add the remaining paste that we had made. Saute this till the raw smell goes off. Now to this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of chili powder. Mix this well and then I have finely chopped three tomatoes. I'm going to add these tomatoes and cook them till they're nice and soft. Let's take a look at the rice. Since we had soaked the rice, it will not take too long to cook. Within 10 to 15 minutes, it should be almost done. It's the correct consistency. It's not cooked and it is still yet to be cooked which we are going to cook on a dump. So let's switch off the flame and drain the water. Now let's remove it in a thali and cool it. Now till the rice cools down, we'll finish off with our gravy. Our tomatoes are almost nice and mushy. I'm going to add the marinated chicken. Mix this well. So I'm going to add a cup of water to this and I'm going to cook it on a medium flame till the chicken is almost done. We need to check for salt over here because we've already added salt in the marination and also when the onions were browning. So just be careful, you can taste the gravy and then if you feel the salt is less, you can add it. I'm going to cover this and cook it till the chicken is done. Let's check on the chicken. This is done. Now I'm going to add a few boiled potatoes. I have baby potatoes here. I'm going to add six, seven of them. Just mix them well in the curry. Cook it for another minute. I'm going to put this gravy in another vessel because I'm going to layer it and then I'm going to cook it on a dum. To this, I'm going to add the rice. To this rice, I'm going to add some saffron milk. I have infused a few strands of saffron in warm milk, melted ghee. This will just glaze the rice and make it look beautiful. I'm going to add some finely chopped coriander. And I have 
some fried onions which I'm going to garnish this biryani with. I'm going to simply cover this with a lid and I'm going to cook it on a dum on a very low flame for 10 to 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes. We were cooking this biryani on a dum. Now let's plate this dish because it's ready to be served. See how moist the biryani is. You can have this biryani with an amazing raita of your choice and enjoy your meal. For such simple recipes for biryanis, like, share and subscribe to Get Curried. Hello and welcome to Masala Trails with me Smita Dev on Get Curried. The southern part of India is gifted with a beautiful coastline and hence they have a variety of amazing seafood. Today I'm going to show you a wonderful dish which is made with rice and it also has some prawns in it. The Kerala Chimin Biryani. First, I'm going to marinate the prawns. I'm going to put 2 tablespoons of chilli powder, 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder, 1 tablespoon of coriander seed powder, juice of 1 lemon and salt. And I'm going to mix this well. I have taken half a kilo of shelled prawns. I'm going to keep these prawns aside for about 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll begin with the rice. So for the rice, I'm going to heat a tablespoon of ghee and once the ghee has melted, I'm going to add two sliced onions in this. Saute the onions a bit and I'm going to add my whole spices. In the whole spices, I've taken bay leaves, cinnamon, four green cardamoms, and 10 cloves. Now I'm going to saute this till the onions are translucent. The onions have become nice and soft. Now I'm going to add the rice. I have soaked 5 cups of long grain rice. You can also use basmati rice for this. To this I'm going to add 10 cups of water. I'm going to add lemon juice and salt. I'm going to stir this well, cover it and cook it till each grain is nice and separate. I think this should take about 15 to 20 minutes and keep the flame on a medium. Now let's make the biryani masala. I've taken bay leaves, Masala elaichi, which is the black cardamom, cloves, cinnamon, caraway seeds, anise seeds, nutmeg, mace. Now all this I'm going to simply grind to a nice fine powder. Our biryani masala is ready. The rice is cooking nice and slowly. Our garam masala is ready. Now let's try the prawns. For that I'm going to take a little oil. A lot of oil. Once the oil is hot, I'm going to fry the prawns. Just fry these prawns for two to three minutes. And now I'm going to remove these prawns in a bowl. Now it's time to make the gravy. For that, I'm going to heat two tablespoons of ghee in the same pan and I'm going to add five sliced onions and saute them nice and golden. Let's check on the rice also. Our rice is cooked beautifully. Each grain is nice and separate. Let's turn off the heat and keep the rice to cool. The onions have turned golden. Let's add our ginger, garlic and green chilli paste. Now I'm going to add half a cup of finely chopped coriander, quarter cup of finely chopped fresh mint,
a teaspoon of chili powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder and I'm going to saute this masala. Now I'm going to add the biryani masala. This was almost two tablespoons. Now I'm going to add the prawns. Mix this well. If you feel the gravy has become too dry, you can add little water to this. I'm going to add half a cup of water. And I'm going to add very little salt because we had already added salt when we were marinating the prawns. Now I'm going to mix this and cover it and cook it for 5 minutes. Our gravy is ready. The rice is also ready. I kept it to cool. Now we'll assemble the biryani. Let's put half the gravy in a broad based vessel. Now let's put some rice. Now we'll sprinkle some finely chopped coriander, some finely chopped mint, some fried onions. I have soaked some saffron in warm milk. So we'll put some of that. A tablespoon of ghee. Now let's put the remaining gravy on top of this. The remaining rice. Let's sprinkle the coriander leaves again. The mint leaves. The fried onions. The saffron milk. And little ghee. And now let's cover this and cook this on a low flame for 10 minutes. We kept this biryani on a dump for 15 minutes. Now let's switch off the flame and serve this biryani. The fragrance is outstanding. If you're a seafood lover, I'm sure you're going to do anything to have this biryani. You don't have to do much. You just have to follow this recipe and enjoy your biryani. For such varied recipes from different regions of India, keep watching Get Curried. Hey guys, welcome to Get Curried. This is Varun Inamdar and today I'm going to make an Indian coastal specialty. It's called crab rice. So let's begin. The first thing is to heat a pan and add in a tablespoonful of oil. Well, you could also make this in ghee, but oil is preferable. Once the oil heats up, the first thing that goes in are curry leaves. Well, this is again a specialty of the Indian coasts. The next thing that goes in is crushed ginger garlic and green chilies. Let's give this a stir. Once the raw smell of ginger garlic and green chili kind of goes away, which is 30-40 seconds on high flame, we add in fried onions. Let's give this a stir. And while this is getting cooked, I'll add in desiccated coconut which has been roasted. What I have done here is to save some time, I have used fried onions directly. What you can do is start with sliced onions and cook them till they turn nice golden brown in color. The next thing that goes in are some chilies to make it extra spicy. And with this, let's add in some powder spices. While talking about Indian coastlines, this is a specialty of the Kohli community, which is the fishermen folk. Well, they have a special masala called the Kohli masala. If you don't have that, this is all that you need to use. Beginning with turmeric powder, red chilli powder, followed by cumin powder, coriander powder, and finally, garam masala. Let's give this a mix. Now, since this is a crab recipe, crabs by default leach a lot of water. To thicken that, we of course need a thickener. And in this case, it is roasted gram flour. Now, let's cook this for just 30 seconds. Well, time to add in the crabs. I have used mud crabs. And since they are mud crabs, we need to nicely scrub them. In fact, scrub them nicely, remove all the mud possible, wash it nicely and cut it into halves along with the claws, of course. Give this a nice mix. Time to add in some salt, along with tamarind pulp. 
Well, here if you notice, this recipe does not use kokum, which is again a berry or a fruit which is integral to the coastal cooking. But here, the kolis use tamarind, which is again extremely important. Time to add in water. We need to give this a good stir. Cover this and cook it for 5 minutes on high flame. Well, the crabs have been cooking for the last 5 minutes. Let's give that a check. It's perfectly cooked. And how I use the word perfect is because crabs, crustaceans or lobsters for that matter turn red or orange in color when they are perfectly cooked. And now if you see, these are perfectly cooked. Time to add in parboiled rice. Well, this rice has been flavored with some salt, as basic as that. Without pressing this, we just need to make sure it is spread all across like so. Time to cover this and cook it for a further and last 12 minutes. It's been 12 minutes and our crab rice is cooked. Let's switch this off and let it be covered for another 2 minutes before you serve. Let's check this and garnish this with chopped coriander leaves. Time to serve this. And as they say, what's there in the name? Whether you call this a rice preparation, pulao, pilaf for a biryani, it can't get tastier than this. Do not forget to like and share the video and subscribe to Get Curry. I'm here in my farmhouse near Alibagh, which I've been visiting as a child right since early 90s. And whenever I'm here, I make sure I create my fish biryani, which is a family favorite. So let's begin. I have a chula which I have prepared here. On top of this, I am placing an earthen pot. Let's first begin with slicing the onions. The earthen pot has heated up. I am adding in some oil. Once this heats up, I will add in the sliced onions. While the onions are getting cooked, I'll slice a few tomatoes. While this is continuing to cook, let's cut some green chilies. Just make sure you snip the stalk and slit the chilies diagonally. Once the onion starts sweating a little, I'll be adding in the tomatoes and chilies. While this continues sweating, I'll add in some whole spices. In this case, bay leaf, some cloves, black cardamom and green cardamom. A quick stir. Once this softens a little, I'll be adding in the ginger garlic paste. Along with this, some curry leaves. Let's stir this well. Allow this to cook for a minute or so, so that the raw smell of the ginger and garlic goes away. While this is continuing to cook, I'm adding in some cumin seeds, a stick of cinnamon, freshly crushed coriander powder, turmeric powder, red chilli powder and some salt. Let's mix this nicely. The masala is cooked and ready. Let's add in some coconut milk. While the masala for the biryani is simmering, Allow me to introduce you to the hero of the dish and that is surmai. To which I am going to add in a little bit of salt, a little bit of powdered garam masala and a little bit more of turmeric. I am going to pat this lightly and this fish goes straight in the pot. For some extra sourness, I am adding in some dried kokum petals and now over this, some parboiled long grain rice. To this, I am adding some saffron milk for that extra added flavour. 
and just before placing the lid i'll cover this with a banana leaf and this goes on dum for 10 to 15 minutes the fish is cooked and so has the biryani i'm moving this out and let's start plating Finally some juliennes of orange and lemon rind some mint sprigs and boiled eggs Like I said earlier this recipe has been my family favorite for many years now I hope this becomes yours too Hey guys, welcome to Get Curry. This is Varun Namdar and today I'm going to show you one of the quickest ways of making a mutton biryani at home and that is keeping the aroma and the flavors intact. So let's begin. For this, I'm taking long grain or basmati rice which I have soaked for 20 minutes in lukewarm water. Simultaneously, what I had also done is kept some water here to boil. The first thing is to flavor the water with some salt. We need to keep in the salt a little extra. because that all needs to get soaked in the grain of rice to this i'm adding in a tablespoon full of ghee along with this a tablespoon of ginger garlic and green chili paste finally some whole spices the first one bay leaves followed by some cumin seeds 8 to 10 cloves a few cinnamon sticks 2 to 3 green cardamom pods and 2 black cardamom pods Let this come to a roll boil for another two to three minutes, and in the interim, let's start marinating the pieces of mutton. For this, I'm using a kilo of tender meat, to which I'm adding in a cupful of yogurt, a cupful of fried onions, one fourth cup of mint leaves, one fourth cup of coriander leaves, two tablespoons of ginger garlic and green chili paste. a tablespoon full of ghee some slit green chilies and now time to add in some spices let's first begin with 2 to 3 bay leaves followed by a teaspoon of cumin seeds a tablespoon of red chili powder a teaspoon of turmeric a teaspoon of garam masala powder a few strands of saffron 2 to 3 pieces or sticks of cinnamon 8 to 10 cloves two green cardamoms and two black cardamoms before mixing this let's quickly have a look at the water which is boiling let's add in the soaked rice this now needs to boil on high flame for a minimum of 12 minutes let's mix the pieces of mutton if you have some time at hand at this stage you can now let it marinate for 30 minutes but since we are doing it the quicker way i am letting the pressure cooker do the magic So let's turn the flame on and let's add the pieces of marinated mutton into the pressure cooker. Let's scrape in all the masalas and the yogurt. At this stage I'm adding in sliced tomatoes followed by salt as required. In this case instead of water I'm adding in milk. That's going to make it richer and flavorful. Finally, just a tablespoon full of oil. Give this a nice mix. And allow this to cook under pressure for four whistles. Let's quickly check on the rice as well without stirring vigorously and without breaking the grains of rice. We do not need to cook this in its entirety. The rice needs to be 3/4 cooked. Let's drain this off. We need to be extremely careful with the steam that's jutting out at this moment. The trick to make the perfect biryani is to get the proportion or the ratio of the rice and the mutton right. In this case, I have used 500 grams of basmati rice to 1 kg of mutton. Now let's wait for the mutton to get cooked. It's been four whistles. Let's turn the flame off. and allow the pressure in the cooker to subside completely and this may take around 10 to 12 minutes 
The pressure of the cooker has completely settled. Let's check the doneness of the meat. The meat has cooked perfectly. Let's now move on to layering the biryani. For this, I'm going to use the same pot in which we had cooked the basmati rice. I'm going to build this up in layers. The first one being meat and the gravy, followed by the cooked basmati rice. Very carefully, without breaking the grains of rice. Make sure you do not press the gravy or the rice at this stage. Let's add in some ghee, followed by fried onion, along with chopped coriander leaves. Let's repeat the layers, starting with meat. Finally, let's cover this with a lid and cook this for the first 7 minutes on high flame and the next 7 minutes on low flame. It's been 14 minutes now and the mutton biryani is screaming for attention. So let's turn the flame off and let's begin serving. Finally, let's garnish this with some fried onions and chopped coriander. So while a traditional mutton biryani has its own charm, it's now time to say hello to this quickest biryani in town. Let everyone across the world benefit from this recipe. So all you have to do is like and share the video and subscribe to get curried.